From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. Stolen crypto used to fund North Korean missile program. A UN report found that the North Korean cyber attack stole over $50 million worth of digital assets between 2020 and mid-2021, providing an important revenue source for the regime's nuclear and ballistic missile program. These attacks targeted three crypto exchanges across North America, Asia, and Europe. This actually dwarfs a figure published by the security company Chainalysis back in January, which estimated that North Korea netted as much as $400 million in digital assets in 2021. This isn't a new strategy for North Korea either, with the 2019 UN report finding the state had amassed at least $2 billion for its weapons programs using cyber attacks over the years. Microsoft disables protocol used by malware. The Redmond company announced it temporarily disabled the MS App Installer protocol for the MSIX packaging format, saying it was being abused by Emotet and other malware. The MS App Installer protocol allows for installing apps by clicking on a link without downloading a full package. Threat actors have been actively exploiting a flaw in the AppX installer to send malicious links and phishing messages. Disabling the protocol means apps cannot be directly installed from a web server. Microsoft plans to reintroduce the protocol as a group policy that IT admins could opt into in order to control its usage within organizations. Meta may pull out of the EU. In Meta's annual report to the Securities and Exchange Commission, Meta emphasized the need for a new data framework to transfer data from EU users to the U.S., saying complex and evolving U.S. and foreign laws could harm its business. The European Court of Justice invalidated the U.S.-EU Privacy Shield framework back in 2020. While Facebook currently uses standard contractual clauses, or SCCs, for data transfers, these have been challenged in court and awaited decision by Ireland's Data Protection Commission to see if they meet GDPR muster. If a new framework is not adopted and SCCs are successfully challenged in the EU, Meta says we will likely be unable to offer a number of our most significant products and services, including Facebook and Instagram, in Europe. Israel investigating domestic use of NSO Group spyware. The Israeli government announced it will form a committee to investigate reports from Calculus that domestic law enforcement agencies used NSO Group's Pegasus spyware in the country without a court order, including a prosecution witness in former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's corruption trial. Police officials initially denied use of the tool, but later ordered an investigation, citing additional findings. NSO maintains that it carefully controls access to hacking tools like Pegasus for use by intelligence agencies by a vetted group of select countries, although it has never disclosed its actual customers. And now a word from our sponsor, Datadog. Datadog's cloud security platform delivers real-time threat detection and continuous configuration audits across your entire production environment, so you can bring speed and scale to your security organization. The cloud security platform is built on top of Datadog's observability platform, which breaks down silos between security and DevOps teams and aligns them to shared organizational goals. To learn more about how Datadog security monitoring can solve cloud complexity challenges with a unified platform, download the product brief at datadoghq.com CISO. FCC delivers new network equipment swap bill to Congress. FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel informed Congress that network service providers applied for $5.6 billion worth of reimbursements for ripping and replacing equipment deemed insecure by the U.S. government, mostly to replace network equipment from ZTE and Huawei. Much of this impacts small and rural ISPs who selected Huawei and ZTE equipment because it was price competitive. In September 2020, the FCC estimated the effort would cost $1.8 billion, and Congress allotted $1.9 billion as part of the supply chain reimbursement program. Target company ransomware decryptor released. The antivirus firm Avast released the decryption utility, providing a free path to potentially regain access to files for victims of the ransomware. However, Avast warned that it can only be used to restore encrypted files under certain conditions. The company warns the process will be extremely resource-intensive, maxing out processor cores for up to 10 hours. The decryptor works by cracking the password after comparing an encrypted file with its original unencrypted version. The utility can also back up encrypted files, which Avast recommends in case anything goes wrong during the decryption process. Target company ransomware has been active since mid-June 2021, with activity peaking in December. Google expands VM threat detection. Google Cloud added to its security command center, offering virtual machine threat detection in public preview. At launch, this is limited for scanning for crypto miners, using agentless memory scanning from the hypervisor to look for signals of compromise without impacting performance of the VMs. Google plans to add additional capabilities over time and potentially integrate it with other Google Cloud security tools. 
A recent Google Cybersecurity Action Team Threat Horizons report found that 86% of compromised cloud instances were used to mine cryptocurrency. Australian court tells Meta it's all about the cookies. The Office of the Australian Information Commissioner filed a lawsuit against Meta in September 2020, it was then known as Facebook, for breaching the privacy of over 300,000 Australians as part of the data harvested by Cambridge Analytica without their consent. This data was gathered based on just 53 Australians installing Cambridge Analytica's personality test app used for data collection. Meta attempted to have the case thrown out, saying it did not carry out business or collect or hold personal identifiable information in Australia, and therefore cannot be sued under Australia's privacy laws. Australia's federal court threw out the argument, saying parts of it were divorced from reality and arguing that installing cookies on user devices in Australia showed it was carrying out business in the country. If you've finished cybersecurity headlines for the day and you need more great content from the CISO series, you've definitely got to check out the latest episode of the CISO Security Vendor Relationship Podcast. This week's episode is entitled, What's the Least Annoying Way to Follow Up with a CISO? and digs into how to improve relations between CISO and vendor. They break down how to build a relationship with vendors to keep tabs on the latest development and look into what are the acceptable ways to follow up from a vendor after a meeting or an event. It's a great way to build relationships that can be valuable for both sides. Look for it in your podcast app of choice, or just head on over to CISOseries.com. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines. 